All right, welcome back to Anton Math. Now, in the last video, we talked about the multiplication principle for compound experiments. And in this video, we're going to talk about another uh, counting tool that we have called tree diagrams uh, for these compound experiments. Now, the possible outcomes of a compound experiment can be shown in a diagram called a tree diagram. A special point, which we call a vertex, is drawn to represent the start of the experiment. And then lines, or branches, are drawn from that vertex to further vertices, representing the first generation outcome. And what that means is um, these second set of vertices are the possible outcomes of the first simple experiment in our compound experiment. Now, if the experiment has two or more stages, the second stage is drawn onto the outcome vertices of the first stage, and these form the second generation, and so on. Or in other words, in this part, what we're doing is, let's say we have two coin flips. The first flip, I'm going to draw my uh, first vertices, and the second flip, I'm going to do the same process I did in this first step, but I'm going to use each of the vertices from my first coin flip as the beginning of the second simple experiment. So I'm going to do a couple of examples, and we're going to use the examples that we did in the last video. So recall, recall in the last video we had this example, a coin is flipped three times, and each time the result is recorded. So we found what the sample space was, right? It's this HHH, HHT, etc. This is our sample space. Now this sample space can also be shown using a tree diagram. And we're going to do that here. So this first vertice I'm going to draw, this just represents the beginning of the experiment, right? Now these first two branches are going to be my first simple experiment. So these first two branches go to these two new vertices. One of the vertices is heads, and the other, vertice, the other vertex is tails, right? This is my first coin flip. Now my second coin flip can happen whether my first coin flip was heads or tails in two different ways. I have that my first coin flip, if, if my first coin flip was heads, my second coin flip can be either heads or tails. And if my first coin flip was tails, my second coin flip can be either heads or tails again. And we have one more coin flip, right? This is my second generation. I need to do my third generation. So this coin flip, and notice when I'm drawing it, my, uh, my branches get closer and closer together, right? This kind of keeps it a little bit in line. So regardless of what my second generation outcome was, my third coin flip has a possibility of heads and tails. So I'm going to draw these branches from my third generation from each of the vertices that were created in my second generation. Getting a little tight down here. Okay, and this is our complete tree diagram. Now what this diagram is, is let's say I follow one of these paths. And what, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start at my initial vertex, and I'm going to choose one of these branches at each of the vertices, but I always move to the right. I never turn around and move left again. But if I do that, following one of these paths, for example, let's, let's go up here and maybe down here and, and up here again, this path, this blue path that I've drawn on here is heads, then tails, then heads, and that corresponds exactly to this component right here, this sample point in my sample space, right? Now every single one of the sample points in my sample space is represented along one of these paths, one of the possible paths, and every possible path is exactly one of the points in the sample space, represented only once on the tree diagram. Okay, so this is what the tree diagram is. Let's take a look at our other example that we did. Uh, when we repeated the previous example where we stopped flipping as soon as a head was obtained. So looking at my tree diagram here, the first flip can result in a heads or a tails. Now the second generation, recall that I only flip the coin again if I got a tails before, right? If I get a heads, I stop flipping. So here I'm not going to draw a second generation here. I'm only going to draw it from the tails, right? Only when we get a tails are we going to flip again. So if I flip a tails in the first simple flip, I can flip a heads or a tails for my second flip. And again, if I get a tails for my second flip, I can get a heads or a tails for my third flip. And we're only flipping three times, so this is going to be the end of my tree diagram. And again, if I take any path starting from the leftmost vertex, moving always to the right, once I get to a terminal vertex, that's going to correspond to one of my sample points. So starting here, for example, I can go down one, and then maybe I'll get a heads. So this corresponds to the second sample point 
tails heads, right? If I went down twice and then up to the heads, that would be this third sample point, etc. Now in these two examples, we've been flipping coins consecutively. I've been flipping a coin and then recording the result, and then flipping a coin and then recording the, exalt, the result. But that's not the only time we can use a tree diagram. We can also use a tree diagram if the events, the simple events are happening, or the simple experiments are happening simultaneously. So if, for example, a nickel and a dime are simultaneously flipped. Well, I can draw a tree diagram, and I'm going to have the nickel be my first simple experiment. So my nickel can be heads, or it can be tails when I flip it. Now if my nickel is heads, my dime could still be heads or tails. And if my nickel was tails, my dime, of course, could still be heads or tails, right? These are independent. So no matter what I flip with my nickel, I can still do all possible flips with my dime. So here, this part of the tree diagram represents my nickel. And this part of the tree diagram represents my dime. OK? And that's it. Tree diagrams are fairly basic and intuitive. Um, the hardest part about a tree diagram is trying to squeeze everything in. But this is what a tree diagram in, is, and this is how we use it to illustrate uh, the compound experiment that we're doing. All right, now that's the end of this first section. In the next section, we're going to talk about counting the unions of different events. We'll see you there.